open sign. It's a little bit different when uh, it's in the dark. All right, we'll go lights on for the walkthrough. Obviously, this is a bakery. Um, we don't really know a whole lot about the activity they're receiving, which is good. We come in blind and we're able to capture evidence and I can lend my uh, what I receive and what I feel and share that. And it not be polluted by what is a person's testimony or experience. I've brought Liam with us. He is the tech expert and uh, the Dark Dealings team has uh, some new equipment we're gonna have on display. Um, one of these pieces uh, I've been told is not one we've seen on TV recently. Um, so we'll probably talk to him and see how it works. Um, so this looks like maybe the baking facility uh, for the bakery. At the same time as I walk in, I had the faintest impression of uh, a shorter lady um, over by those windows. I uh, think that spirit hasn't interacted with me. Um, so I can't tell whether or not that spirit is residual, uh, energy that's just been recorded into this place or whether that spirit is intelligent. Maybe we find out later. Uh, there's so many stairs um, and back ways and back entrances and um, basement areas that we will, uh, it's gonna be a little bit like a maze. It'll be a challenge for Liam, our tech expert, um, and myself. Uh, we want no one to get hurt on this property site. that back there. The stairwell leads down to where I don't know. But it looks like we can head up. Looks like it may lead up to an attic space. floor behind me. Oh, watch your head. Duck your head, Liam. Looks like it may have been used for a bedroom. 
There's a light on in here. Ow. Yeah, it, this was just flipped on. I don't know if it's been left on. Um, this whole area has been vacant. I want to say that the owner said that they moved out a couple weeks ago. So I find it peculiar that that light is on. There's a lot of energy up here. Is there a light that handles that? Okay, I'm going to turn this light off. You would think there's a light switch somewhere up here. There would need to be over here. Wow, tight space. I just saw what appeared to be a small girl just standing there. She probably was no bigger than a six, seven year old. So it might be that we recognize or uh, that we, this is a place where we'll need to film. Um, we'll talk a bit about the equipment you have. I understand there's some new stuff. Yeah. Storage space. Might be a challenge to film up here, but we'll, we'll certainly do it. As, uh, um, as I was walking in, there's kind of a weird, like I get the feeling um, it's kind of like a replayed memory downstairs of like a man waiting for his son to return home, uh, potentially from, from war. Um, I can't help but believe this may be a first world war kind of, kind of story. Two, we'll head back down to this floor. There's kind of a busyness in one of the spirits I pick up on. It's like that person was a repair person or took care of small machinery. Uh, they have a feeling of being a tinker. Um, someone, so, so it makes me feel like maybe it wasn't a past uh, homeowner and more likely a, a past business here. Um, as far as I know, I've lived in this town for since 2016. It has always been a bake shop um, as far as I know. But it could have been a place where people repaired machinery. Uh, so it would be something small enough that you could bring into this home and repair. But his energy feels a lot like he's the fixer. He's the guy who can fix it. See if there's a light and watch your steps. So we found the door to the basement finally. You found a light for it? Yeah, it Booze Precarious stairs. So when we're filming in blackout, just looks like rough storage here. Oh wow. Yep. Yeah, that looks like a cistern, so maybe where they stored water. Is there no lighting in here? Uh, they took the lights out. We'll probably see more under um, infrared, right? Yeah, we would. All right, so we'll have to try that. It is dark down here. Again, there's like retreating energies. Um, yeah, just like if Spirit doesn't give you the creeps down here. The environment certainly does. I keep getting the overwhelming sense of um, an older man. So older than me, 
having passed while he awaits his son's return. Um, so it, it places kind of the, an older gentleman, I've seen a young um, girl, and I've seen a short uh, woman here as far as spirits go. It gives me a sense of what activity we can expect. All right, we're going lights out. If I can find the switch for this place. Maybe it's this one. Do you want the dots, uh, dots on? We, um, we might do a, some sort of detector. What, what do you have for us down here? You want to try the Mr. D down here? We have the Mr. D? Yeah, we could leave it here by the stairway. You said there's a lot of residual coming off of that. Yeah, there's a lot of energy that's coming off of that. All right, let's go Mr. D then. If we want to try it there. Let's do it. It would be a good test run for us, too, on this piece of equipment. I just push the button on. You set the button, make sure it's upright. All right. It's like right in here. All right, I'm going to get out of its way. All right. About to keep our ear on that. Uh, worry that over the sound and machinery and stuff, we'll have a hard time hearing that. If you are here with us, can you make that device go off? It's just a little black box. I've taken a couple steps back from it. Just to be certain. Again, if you are here, if you belong to this home, this workplace, you can touch that box or you can speak with me. Let yourselves be known. The only bad thing about it is are we sure I'm not setting it off? No. I'm not setting it off, am I? That whole area back there is the area we took. One, there's stairs that lead upstairs just to the right of that box. And two, there is the basement stairs if you go further into that area. Again, if you let yourself be known, all you have to do is touch that box. I keep so in your light grid I keep seeing fuel where it looks like they're bouncing well some of them you have to be careful with the uh, reflection right yeah I'm gonna see if I can capture this with a camera what's really freaking weird 
and I've seen it a few times as occasionally I get a decent sized orb another Okay, yeah, so I think your light. I thought I saw something where it like dark. There's definitely, um, I don't know how to say it. Um, it, I guess if we were trying to debunk it, it's as big as a large housefly. Um, it seems to have a pattern of its own. Again, if you are the spirit that occupies this house, spirit or spirits, uh, please let yourself be known. You can touch that box. You can touch me. You can touch Liam. Again, if you belong here to this home, Please let yourself be known. Touch the little black box. It won't hurt you. It makes a funny little noise. I feel the child. I feel a little kid spirit. Are you the little kid? Did you hear that? Yeah. What was that? Are you the little kid? Did you hear that? Yeah. What was that? I'm not sure you up with you. Alright, again, we're getting a detection. But it may be based off my gross movement. Just keep focused on the mystery duty. Yeah. So we consistently get a response from that. Again, um, we're in your home. You let us know that we are invited here by saying so, just by touching that box. Maybe someone hasn't heard you for years. You need a break? Got it. You got it. Okay. I should trust the tech guy. It's my job. All right. You said the uh, that closet was a retrieving space, right? Yeah, the little room on the front of the house. It's the second floor. Toy. There's a rim pod here. It's probably the closest thing we've seen to the toy. They can touch it. It'll go off. Okay. Three lights. Makes sense. So far, we've had my own personal experiences, and we've had some reaction from uh, the Mr. D, uh, the radar uh, device. Um, I can't make sense out of why uh, I would wave my hand and move my legs and attempt to make the device go off. It would not. Um, there was a point where I felt that, um, I felt as if a child were creeping forward. Um, 
and it went off pretty soon after that. So we, we like for you guys, you have a reliance on this technology. For me, I see what I see. Now with this rim pod, we have a temperature sensor. Um, from what you told me. Yeah. You go and so any variation of temperature, in which direction? Up and down, you get it red when it's warm, and I'll go blue when it's cold. Shh, listen. That's Listen. The, that's the yeah. That's the yeah, Mr. D. Did you hear it? I did. All right. We just had the Mr. D downstairs go off. If that happens again, we're gonna have to snag that camera. Listen. Yeah. Yeah. I have that camera still going downstairs. Yeah. What camera? My little camera. Is it near the uh, Mr. D? It's right, right above it. And it's focusing on it? Should be. It's too dark to tell, but it definitely got the sound. Okay. It should be the blue light as well. Maybe that's where we should have put the stationary infrared. Maybe. We've got activity down there. I do want to pass this here right now. If you're the person setting off the rim pod downstairs, or the Mr. D downstairs, the device downstairs, we have yet another toy up here. You can touch that antenna. What is that? Is that a, a change in temperature? Yeah. So we're getting an indicator on the RAM pod that there's been a change in temperature. The real pod measures the room, right? Yeah. Why don't you explain that a bit? Uh, there's a little antenna uh, that said we have when it touches. Uh, goes off. This one is acclimated to the room. So it starts off zero at room temperature and if anything changes, it goes off and the light is still going there, which is, uh, that means it's not changing. So we had an increase in temperature on the rim pod. Can you touch that device? Just walk to that light and touch that antenna. Makes a fun sound. Again, we're getting a change or variation of the heat in the room. It is warm in here. Um, there is no heat on. I feel you want to step out from behind that door. It take you five or six steps and you can touch that antenna. You can make it go off. Did you hear that? Yeah, yeah. It sounded slightly like a voice. I don't know what was that. 
It seemed like a girl's voice. I don't know how I could classify it further. Sounds like I'm safe to play in the room. Get a change in temperature. It's nighttime, the air outside is getting cooler. It seems weird to me that that would be going off right now. Yeah. Compressor downstairs. This little device, let yourself be known. The family who lived up here had experiences. They're going to tell me your experiences or their experiences of you. I would love to have my own experiences with you. That's a change in the heat again, right? Yeah. Get a little more activity from the REM pod itself. I would love if you could make one of those yellow or blue buttons turn on. They're the lights. It's very much like a, a modern Christmas to see blue and yellow lights. Might be time for a spirit box. I think so. I'm gonna go check that out. Stay put. Yeah. We've heard it quite a few times. And if I'm not mistaken, Liam has left a camera on it. I have to be careful that I don't interrupt that field. If you're making that go off, can you do it one more time? I've uh, ventured downstairs. Uh, we've heard the Mr. D, um, the radar detector go off quite a few times. So I've made my way downstairs. Uh, again, feel energy. There it goes again. I again feel air energy in the space in the back of the kitchen work area. I've just heard, um, I've just heard Liam upstairs kind of give a moan. So I'm gonna head upstairs and check out what's going on. you make mention of something. What are you getting? Uh, a few minutes ago I was uh, asking for that little girl and uh, I heard something that didn't make that what it was. Dude. Okay. We'll put a recording on this even for, just for sound. Is it the highest volume? Yeah, we do like that. I know it's loud, but you can communicate with us through this box. Can 
you give me your name, you can tell me, or you can tell the spirit box. to the temperature. And once again, shows an increase in heat. So we had just went downstairs for a water break and uh, in my recollection we were across the counter from each other yeah across the counter um the front counter and um uh, taking our break i had left the full spectrum camera upstairs running in the, in the room yeah so so the full spectrum camera was left running in the room um and it wasn't until uh, after uh, we started to review the evidence that we found that the light came on by itself upstairs. Uh, while we were doing the walkthrough in the attic, there was a light left on. Yeah, there was a light left on in the back. We assumed that the owners had left it on. And in speaking with the owners, uh, they felt that they had. Um, so as we got up there, we didn't really think anything extra about the lights being on. And in other words, it escaped us until we got the evidence back. And at that point, how'd you feel? Uh, a little, a little shaken with it. Uh, it was surprising, right? It's surprising to see that a light can come on, um, and no one be there. And it's the kind of thing that... If, if it happened at your home, you'd maybe blame your children or your partner. Uh, it's, it's just not the kind of activity where you go, well, this is obviously paranormal until it was caught on camera.
uh, when we're filming in infrared or ultraviolet, uh, it's gonna look pretty damn bright, but um, I literally cannot see my hand in front of my face down here. Um, so we're gonna use that. We're gonna set up some equipment and see what the basement has to offer. No, it should take a lot to do. Are you making that, are you making that uh, device go off? I've got it on camera. This is kind of a cool way to show that you're here. Again, in the basement, we have an absence of light. Um, our only video is um, the ultraviolet uh, video. We are infrared. I forget, we had a plasma light uh, burn out of a battery ultra quickly. Um, we've had activity from the Mr. D. Just like that. Um, yeah. Something. Ow! That's about right. Price for the case. Um, crank up the wire. I'll tell you what, throw that speaker this way. I'm recording it, that makes the most sense for me. Can you open that up there? No. We'll pull out Richard's favorite uh, broken radio. Are you there? You can speak with us through this box. So, oh yeah. You like yourself being known. What is your name? My name's Kevin, you can just let me know and I'll share. I said William earlier, are you William? Again, you can let yourself be known. Do you live here? Did you live in this house? <laughs> I sound like a girl. Are you the little girl I saw earlier? Not to be straight, sometimes the uh, spirit box just aggravates me. Um, as just a natural medium, sometimes it's easier for me to get the message. Since we are attempting to uh, collect evidence, uh, it would be good to have this as a piece of evidence. It supports what I'm saying. It's almost as if we've exhausted the uh, energies down here. So we're gonna take a chance and uh, head upstairs to the attic. 
Um, it's like one or the other. It feels a little bit like we have a spirit that um, I wouldn't say we're chasing, but it tends to set things off when we're not watching. Good? Yep. This may very well be the creakiest place in the whole damn house. Yeah. Check the camera. Why don't you um, set up this rim pod? Here, take that. Yeah, you got it. Just get it. Yeah, I got it. You're trying to get everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Where about you want to set this one up? I would set it up in the middle of the floor back there. Again, I get what appears to be orbs, but I'm going to have to chalk it up to dust. I mean, it's an old house. So we've set up a REM pod. What you're seeing um, that appears to be orbs are potentially dust. It is dusty in here. There is no comfortably setting against this wall. <laughs> we feel like it's a good opportunity to use the uh, spirit box. Again, we get the uh, temperature light on the rim pod going off. I thought I heard someone call my name. Name calling is very common for spirit. Even if they've never met you before. I don't think it was through the spirit box.
Do you feel like you, you scared this family? The little baby. No. Did you hear that? Yeah, I heard no. Did you like the family? How many people are here? Three. That's yeah. Clear. Pretty clear. It felt like a third person was here. That's the heat again from the rim pod. Yeah, it's going off. Again, it's fairly warm up here. Yeah, I zeroed it though. I can feel that other person in this room. Yeah, we can hear your voice. I heard Kevin again. I don't think that's coming from the spirit box. Do you want us to leave? Goodbye. Sound like I said something like leave. We can leave you to rest. If you say good night, I will turn off the spirit box. <laughs> yeah. This was potentially one of the best investigations I've ever been on. Um, just as far as like connecting with a couple different layers of family within the bakery. Um, I could identify uh, a smaller woman and a young girl as being part of maybe one family, potentially all being part of the same family. And uh, the William was a recurring name that kept coming up. So it made me feel like there, you know, there may have been a couple Williams. Um, constantly there was the reinforcing story from Spirit that uh, one William awaited the arrival of a brother or a son from the war and unfortunately I feel that son or that brother or that relative never made it home and that spirit still agonizes over that moment. When we were upstairs in the attic we got such an impression that the family of spirits just no longer wanted us there and maybe a good note to um, ghost hunters and uh, um, paranormal investigators. Sometimes those spirits are quite content to live in a place and they're benevolent, benign, they haven't hurt anybody. And uh, you are the ones disturbing uh, their peace. You're the ones, dis or you're the one who's the trespasser basically. And uh, we're taking that note in the attic. Uh, Liam and I packed our things and we left for the night. It was a great investigation.
Um, I own Susie's Gluten Free and I used to live above the bakery. Um, when we first moved here, my husband and I, we just noticed certain things would go missing. The more comfortable we got living here, the more things started happening. And then also working here, you would just notice certain things would either be misplaced or go missing and you would see stuff out of the corner of your eye. For example, over by the fridges in the back, um, we would constantly, we, my mom and I would see like what seemed like a shadow, a tall, thin shadow pacing back and forth or even standing by the back stairway. Um, in the attic where our bedroom was, I used to have something sit on my bed so the mattress would sink down on the one side. And then when I got pregnant with my daughter, something would always sit there and rub my back while I was trying to sleep, which was very comforting, but I would have to tell whatever it was, I'm trying to sleep, can you please go? And they would go. The one night I actually looked up and it was a gentleman that had long dark hair and wore a red plaid shirt. The gentleman that you drew with the long hair and the flannel shirt looks like the gentleman that would sit on the ed edge of my bed. Um, the other ones, it, the one William looks like to be fairly thin and tall, and that could have been the one that we saw in the corner of our eye pacing. The little girls kind of creeps me out because I ended up having a daughter and she would always just randomly giggle and stuff at nothing. So now I'm wondering if maybe she had a boyfriend. <laughs> the one William here is bald and has hair on the sides of his head and some facial hair. And he looks rather tall and thin, like I mentioned. And then we were scrolling through pictures of my mom's family and her grandfather's name was William. Bald, hair on the sides of his head, tall and thin. And he lost a twin. He lost a brother, so we're wondering if maybe he followed my mom here to try and get a message to her. Um, I believe the older brother was 21 when he died, 21 or 23, and I know he either served in the war or my grandfather was. I'm not too sure about those details 100%. So I'm not, I'll have to ask my mom, but yeah, they, he lost both those, so that's interesting. Well, Laura says sometimes she'll set stuff on her work table, and then she's like, no, I'm pretty sure I left it here, and then it's gone, it's moved. So we're thinking maybe the little girl likes to, likes to play and move things around for us, because she did the same thing upstairs. We would put stuff in certain spots, and... It was gone, so I blame my husband, <laughs> and now I feel bad, <laughs> but don't tell him that. <laughs> and then, um, I guess, what was your overall impression of the spirits in this house? You know what? They were pretty, especially the one that would comfort me was rubbing my back. They were pretty comforting and weren't destructive or harmful. They were just welcoming and letting us live here, so I'm thankful that we didn't have any bad ones.